Now, do you know that uh, it says here that Jesus uh, went up into the temple and taught? And, and I know that it means that He went up into the, the physical temple there 2,000 years ago and taught. But did you know that Jesus, uh, through the Holy Spirit, teaches in this temple right here? Though the world doesn't know anything about it and doesn't understand it. Hold your finger right there at John's Gospel. John also wrote an epistle, a letter. Let's look at that. 1 John chapter 2. Notice something that John says here in 1 John chapter 2. Verse 20. First John chapter 2, verse 20. The same guy that wrote the Gospel that we're reading, he also wrote this letter to believers. He says in verse 20, but you have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. This word unction, a very strange religious looking word. First John chapter 2, verse 20. Unction literally means an anointing. Or uh, you have something from... What unction, what anointing means is uh, it's a reference to the Holy Spirit and it means it's a reference back to 1 Samuel where Samuel uh, anointed David with his horn of oil. He poured a horn of oil over David's head and anointed him with the oil and the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit came upon David from that day forward back when David was anointed to be king. Unction means anointing or it has a reference to the Holy Spirit and that's what John means here. You have an unction or an anointing from the Holy One and he says because of that you know all things. Now what does he mean by that? Well let's skip down to... Uh, Verse 27, he explains it. Verse 27, the anointing, or the unction, same word, the anointing which you have received of him abides in you, and you need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you of all things and is truth and is no lie, and even as it has taught you, you shall abide in him. Isn't that interesting? He says the anointing or the unction, meaning the Holy Spirit, which you have of him, is in you, it lives in you, and it teaches you. Or the Holy Spirit teaches you everything that you need to know. Now that's not to say that we can't learn something externally. That's not to say because, guess what? Here we are on Sunday morning. We come and we read the Bible and we learn things mentally. But you know, uh, when, when we're doing that, and when you're hearing people speak here and there and everywhere and reading books, the Holy Spirit on the inside of you confirms and, and enlightens what it is that you hear. You know, I could stand up here and talk all day long, and if the Holy Spirit didn't make it real to you, and th then you wouldn't get it. You know, you can read, and you know, some people read in the Bible and say, "I don't understand anything. I don't understand what I'm reading here." Well, I'd say a person needs to come to Jesus and get a new spirit on the inside, and that, and then the Holy Spirit on the inside, He is the teacher. Did you know that? We say, and we believe, and it's true, that the Scriptures that we read, what's in the Bible, is not the words of man. It's not written by men, but they're written as they were inspired by the Holy Spirit. The same Holy Spirit that inspired the words in the book is the same Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of believers that teaches you what it means. The same one that inspired it in the first place is the one that shows you and enlightens you as to what it means. Or, here's another way you can look at it. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever had this experience? Have you ever been reading in your Bible, reading along, reading along, and then suddenly you read some you know, particular verse or a thought, it just jumps off the page sort of at you, and it just, it's just suddenly really meaningful to you. Do you know why that happens? Has anyone ever had that experience? The reason that happens is that's the Holy Spirit, the teacher, the anointing, the unction on the inside of you, breathing on it and saying, this is what you need right now. And He brings it to you, makes it alive to you. He does that for us. This is really exciting, isn't it? Amen. Now this is teaching us. Go back to John chapter 7. This is explaining to us a, this dimension of reality, this third dimension of, of reality in Christ, which is represented by this Feast of Tabernacles. Number one, the first thing that we've seen in this chapter is Jesus went up to the feast, but in secret. And the people who didn't believe in Him didn't know He was there. But He said, uh, in verse 14 we read that He is in the temple teaching. Now, that's a thought. Jesus is in His temple teaching. Verse 15. The Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? Jesus answered and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. And if any man will do his will, he'll know of the doctrine, or that is the teaching, whether it's of God, whether I speak of myself. He that speaks of himself seeks his own glory, but he that seeks the glory of him that sent him, the same is true. And no unrighteousness is in him. Did not Moses give you the law, yet none of you keeps the law? This is very bold of him to say this. He said, you're celebrating, making a big issue about the law, but guess what? I know you better than you know yourself. You're not keeping it. <laughs> now, how could he be so bold and say that? Well, you know, if you read in Matthew's Gospel what Jesus said, he said uh, he gave a very good exposition of the law for the point, uh, to make the point that you uh, are not observing what you think you're observing. He said, you know, the law says do not kill. 
But I say, if you hate a man in your heart, it's as though you've killed him already, as though you've committed murder already. Oh, you mean it's more than just the action, it's my heart that needs to change? Yes, that's what he's saying. Your heart needs to change. Because though you might not have committed the act of murder outwardly in your heart, you have that dwelling on the inside of you in your heart. That's why he's saying this. And the people said, verse 20, You have a devil. Who's going around to kill you? Jesus said uh, unto them, I have done one work and you all marvel. This refers back to chapter 5. Remember in chapter 5, the man at the pool? He healed the man at the pool. He said, rise up and walk. And the man rose up and walked. He said, uh, pick up your bed and walk. And the Jews said, why are you carrying your bed? It's the Sabbath day. He said, well, the guy who told me, who healed me, he said, take up your bed and walk. Well, who would say such a thing? Well, he looked around for him and it was Jesus that said it. So they're mad at Jesus because he told this man, stand up and walk, even though it was the Sabbath day. Uh, Moses, and he says this to explain that, verse 22. Moses gave you circumcision, not because it's of Moses, but of the fathers. Literally, Abraham is the one that started it. And you on the Sabbath day circumcise a man. And if a man on the Sabbath day receives circumcision that the law of Moses should not be broken, why are you angry with me because I've made a man whole on the Sabbath day? He's making an ironic kind of a point. He says, listen, you do some work on the Sabbath. You, you circumcise a child on the Sabbath because the law tells you to. So you cut something away and, and you know, we might say, take something away on the Sabbath, but I make somebody whole on the Sabbath. What's the difference? That's what he's saying. I, you know, there's, you do it on the Sabbath and it's okay. I did something on the Sabbath. That's okay too. That's what he's, he's making that point. So let's go on reading here. Judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Then some of them of Jerusalem said, Is not this he that they seek to kill? But lo, he speaks boldly. And they say nothing to him. Do the rulers indeed know that this is the very Christ? Howbeit we know this man whence he is. But Christ comes, no one knows uh, where he's from. And then cried Jesus in the temple as he taught, You both know me and you know whence I am. But I am not come of myself, but of he that sent me. Uh, he that sent me is true, and ye know not. But I know him, for I am, uh, I am from him, and he hath sent me. Now we saw all this on the film, and uh, we know what happens here. Let's skip down here, verse 37. This is the, the main part of this tech chapter. In the last day, the great day of the feast, what feast? Uh, the Feast of Tabernacles, this third feast. After Passover and Pentecost, this final one, the third one, is the, the last day, the most important day, Jesus. Listen to his message on this day of the Feast of Tabernacles. His message is, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the Scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spoke he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Now in verse 38 he says, He that believeth on me, He's talking about believers. He that believeth on me, as the Scripture has said, out of his belly, King James says, uh, literally the Greek word is a word that means out of the innermost being. We could say out of his heart or out of his spirit. King James translates it belly. It just means out of your inward self. He that believes on me, out of his innermost being, shall flow rivers of living water. 